Void Slayer, Worm Killer, Godwoken. You have many names. Let's add ship's captain to the list once we get this thing moving, shall we? Driftwood, of course. Little fishing village. Not very welcoming, but you'll brighten it up, I'm sure. Got family near there. Not the adventuring types. For the best, really. Meister Siva's there, too. My leader. Our leader. She held the Seekers together when we had every reason to fall apart. Hmm. Think of her as a teacher. The powers of the Seven stir in you. She'll reveal them to you. Show you how to manipulate them. I won't let the Fallen be forgotten. I'd be no better than Dallas, no better than Alexander, if I just tossed their remains into the sea. To think that whelp spawned from greatness. He deserves no better fate than his silent monks. All this blood. Children ripped from families. Seekers ripped from me. He's down there now, guarded like some precious jewel, rather than leashed and flogged like the dog he is. Amazing to think those of us in the Order once assumed the gods were with him, and only him. That was before we found the others. Other Godwoken. When Lucian died, we waited, and waited some more. Alexander never rose to divinity. Then we started to find more like him. We weren't the only ones who noticed either. Not every Godwoken we found was alive. And so the Seekers were born. We found Godwoken, housed them, fed them. I loved them like family. I was naive. But let's leave the past in the past and reach for what's ahead. She's not, well, not in the strictest sense. She's not exactly an elf either. Half demon, Meister Siva says, and I don't doubt it. I don't know how Siva came to know her, but Malady's a proper ally. She's not easy to like, but... But there are times I admire her coldness. Gareth fingers the hilt of his blade. He stares at nothing in particular before turning his gaze back to you. Keep Lucian close, Godwoken. Getting this done, come hell or high water. Likely both, eh? Here you stand. This is Dallas's ship, but she can't have been the only one who could get it moving. It'd be too risky, and Dallas is anything but careless. There's a way to move this ship on board, I'm sure of it. The figurehead has certainly caused a commotion lately, but then again, so have the doors downstairs. Everywhere you look, a hunk of wood looking to incinerate or stymie you. You'd be surprised. A ship like this holds many secrets. Hopefully you can discover some these Seekers might have missed. Please, don't go. Ah, there you are. High time to stop gallivanting and resume our journey together, wouldn't you say? Off we go, then.
Show us the way forward. Deliver us from peril. Before you is a towering figurehead carved in the likeness of a dragon. It looms over the bow, its fangs bared at the open sea. There's an odd mark on the side of the figurehead. Battle damage, weather staining. It almost looks like a pattern, however. Searing pain races up your arm. The ship senses you. It's angry. The pain intensifies. It's spreading past your arm, across your chest. Your lungs feel like they're on fire. Tur Sendelius, pray to you for my seeker brethren. Show us the path to salvation. The figurehead continues its vigil over the seas. The detail is remarkable. It looks like it could turn around and incinerate you at any moment. The silent monk leans from one foot to the other. He seems eager to move. The silent monk leans forward slightly and stares at you straight in the eye. I was just getting used to this seafaring life. You know, we could... Ah. Uh, from the look in your eye, I gather it's time to grab my things and get back to work. Ready. We'd probably get tired of this view soon enough anyway. Well, there must be something around here. We have to find a way to get this ship moving. We can't let the Magister... around here. How are you doing? You creatures with your legs and arms and your opposable thumbs. You always want to steer the ship. You need to trust the ship. It knows what it's doing. It dances to the tune. It goes la 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 or something like that. It's pretty catchy, but I can't remember how it goes. Good thing Dada had that book, eh? Oh, she opened it and looked at the marks on the inside. How the hell else? All right, all right. Go to the nose bit of the ship, open the book, look at the markings inside it, sing the song. That's it. Get it right, and the ship will dance to your tune. Get it wrong, and the ship will kill you. That's always entertaining. For me, anyway.
Don't stare. It's tiresome. Yes, and had my mask not been stolen, you would still not see me. I could be an elf, a dwarf, a tall dwarf? Human, that's the term. Alas, I am naught but bone until I can find a suitable corpse and a device that allows me to remove its face and craft a mask. But you're quite right. I am not of your kind. I am an eternal. My people are glorious, prehistoric and missing. Thankfully, there are answers to be found. I simply need to get to Reaper's Coast to return to the Black Pit's excavation site. The only treasure worth digging for, knowledge. I was investigating a site where several artifacts of my people have been found. Some were even intact. Alas, I was not the only one there. Those red-robed idiots were scurrying about too trampling precious clues under their ignorant boots. They caught me when I failed to correctly respond to their questions and dragged me here. Still, it's good to be on the move again. They simply asked me what I was doing there, and I simply told them to be gone from my lands. I may have used the phrase pathetic mortals. Come to think of it, I may have used it several times. Damn fools. The faster we leave them behind, the happier I shall be. Is that so? Perhaps we could find an arrangement that benefits us both. I need to travel to the Black Pit's oil field near Reaper's Coast. But my attempts at staying under the cover have not gone well to date. Given how well you handled yourself in Fort Joy, I rather think you could be of use. And I am certainly useful to you. So, how about it? I travel with you and aid you in your various chores and tasks while you help me to remain incognito. Excellent. While we are conversing, perhaps you notice that I am rather skilled in, well, all things. Of course, the arcane arts are my little speciality, but being a brilliant wizard does not mean I cannot handle blade or bow. So, which do you require for this enterprise of yours? I could do that with one hand behind my spine. Now, shall we get on? There is rather a lot to see. Splendid. Very well. Let's be off. Spiders and disappointment. All that fighting will be worth less than nothing if we can't get this tub moving.
Melody says if we can get the ship to move, we can go home. Home! Nice boat, eh? We got an upgrade. There's got to be another way to get it going, but we can't find a way into Dallas's room. Maybe you can see something we can't. The door seems like any door, at least at first. Then you notice it's unblemished wood. There is no knot, no scratch, no dent to detract from its apparent perfection. The wood groans and creaks. For a moment, you swear a face appears in the wood. A face tortured and tormented, a six-sided shape carved upon its forehead. The face vanishes. The anguished face appears, then... The door remains unmarked. The thud of your fist upon the wood resonates deeper than you'd expected it to. It turns into what's... to me if you're looking for hired help. I've got good fighters of every stripe. They know how to keep their mouths shut too, as long as there's gold in it for them. Oh, I see you have a full contingent. What's this? I found something. what the ship's cat dragged in. You were on that luckless lot of timber that met with one tentacle too many, weren't you? Oh, but you've come a long way, just as I have. Rather boring sometimes to travel by oneself. We could see where the road takes us together, if you like. In that case, I'm delighted as well. Let's discuss our respective roles then, shall we? You, me, and Death will be playing many a round of hide-and-seek. So, what role would you like me to play? As a rogue, my speciality is stealth. The quick silence of the dagger striking unseen. That said, I'm perfectly lethal wielding any weapon or magic. So, the choice is yours. Suits me fine. Lead on. Or better yet, let me take the lead. Then follow me. But wait. You seem to have quite a few followers already. We'll... The Seeker flexes her arms stiffly. Her joints audibly pop. She sees you draw near. I owe you, Godwoken. <laughs> Without your help, I'd likely still be a prisoner around here, not guarding Alexander the bloody divine himself. She nods her thanks and immediately winces, laying her hand on the back of her neck. I wish. No, the Magisters kept me chained to the bulkhead. Arms held above me head, feet barely able to touch the deck. Now my joints are paying the price. Or a big bloody target on our backs. We took their leader and their flagship. The hammer won't stand for that. She'll be hunting for us. The Seeker throws a toxic look at the imprisoned Magister. Hardly. She's just some deckhand. If it were up to me, I'd tie her to the main mast and use her for arrow practice. But Malady wants her alive for now. No. They had her stand below, chained up in the dark. But the Reds were up to something in here. 
Maybe it was just the lack of food and rest playing tricks, but I swear I heard chanting and ugh, horrible moaning coming from here. But when we broke free, it was empty. Hey, don't I know you from somewhere? So, we've got quite the task on our hands, haven't we? I have to admit, the whole thing is very intriguing. The old band back together again, hmm? I guess that depends, doesn't it? Look at me, hard. What do you see? Losaline's back slightly, thin arms crossed in front of her chest, and stares at you defiantly from dark eye sockets, darker and deeper set than when you first met. She blows back a lock of white hair, matted with sweat and grime, and holds back a smile from the corners of her lips. Exactly. Exactly. I want to make sure you understand, well, the risks. I can hear its thoughts. It isn't out for blood. It's out for pain. Domination. Total domination. I was wrong to think I could hold it off. I might hurt you. I might hurt anyone. Could you stop me? Really stop me if it came to that? Either you'll do it or you won't. You have to choose. Fair enough. But I can't walk beside you then. I need more than a companion. I need... I need someone I can trust to do what needs to be done. You let me know if you change your mind. mate of the Divine Eminence vessel, Lady Vengeance. Can't you say anything else? A young Magister paces around the brig, fussing over Alexander's unconscious form. She leans over and applies a damp cloth to his brow. She notices you observing her. She straightens her back and sets her jaw in a defiant scowl. Magister Ranley, Corker's mate of the Divine Eminence Vessel, Lady Vengeance. That's all the information I'm giving to any of you lot, so stow your questions, dwarf! Magister Ranley, Corker's mate of the... The Magister falls silent, but stares at you with unwavering defiance. The Magister's stare hardens into an... Magister Ranley, Corker's mate... Magister Ranley, Corker's... If it were up to A me. young Magister paces around the brig, fussing over... At she notices you observing her. She straightens her back and sets... Magister Ranley... Corker's mate of the Divine Eminence Vessel, Lady Vengeance. That's all the information I'm giving to any of you lot. So stow your questions. Magister Ranley, Corker's mate of the... The Magister falls silent, but stares at you with unwavering defiance. The Magister's stare... Magister Ranley, Corker's mate of... Magister paces around. She notices Magister Ranley, Corker's mate of the Divine. Magister Ranley, Corker's mate of the Magister falls silent, but stares at you with unwavering defiance. The Magister's Magister Ranley, Cor the Seeker has removed one of her gauntlets in order to flex her wrist. It bears inflamed marks from where shackles bit into her. She sees you. You must be starved for company to linger around here, friend. You and half of Rivalon, friend. But no, he hasn't made a sound. He'll be in for a rude awakening when he does come to. Good luck getting anything out of either of them. 
Our special guest is out cold. And the other one ain't in much of a talking mood. All right, then, just... Don't make me regret it. I'll keep an eye on the red until the cage is locked again. Get away from him, sorcerer. That's the divine. All right. Don't harm him. I'll be watching. If Anne grabs you by the sleeve, not hard, but insistent. <laughs> I ought to chain you up like you're not doing to me. Magister Randy, Caucus Major. Let me work on him. I've got questions that need answers. Answers I can only get from him. If Anne approaches Alexander, who lies flat on a bare wire cot, Though unconscious, Alexander's eyes are only half closed. His swollen jaw hangs open at an odd angle. If Anne grabs him by the jaw and shakes violently, Alexander's face contorts with agony and his eyes flutter, yet he doesn't return to consciousness. Why did you trigger the death fog before the elves had a chance to escape? Why? Why? No matter how loud If Anne shouts his questions, there is no response from the unconscious Alexander. He reaches his arm back, and you realize he intends to punch Alexander in the face. As if waking from a dream, he turns to you, disoriented. Hesitantly, he drops his fist until it hangs loosely by his side. Sheepish now, he scratches the side of his head with his other hand. You're right there. With a nod, Ifan strides away. 